of the service as well. Pastor Nick Villanelle of Abiding Grace in South Lake, a congregation of the NCL, will be here to help lead the worship. He is Tom's pastor for at least a little while longer. And as he reminded me, once Tom's ordained, I get that job. Uh, so thanks, Nick. Uh, we are blessed and grateful for the congregations and the people and all those Tom who we just saw who are celebrating this day and celebrating not just you, but your family, and the commitment they are making to support you in this time, and we'll have an opportunity for you all to affirm that commitment to support Tom in his life as a pastor in the ministry of Word and Sacrament. So, welcome. Thanks be to God. What a joyful day it is. And I turn it over now to Pastor Nick Rillenow, who will begin the living. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the fountain of living water, the rock who gives birth. Give us birth, our life, and our salvation. Amen. We give you thanks, O God, from the beginning. Your spirit moved over the waters, and by your word you created the world, calling forth life in which you shook the light. Through the waters of the flood, you delivered Noah and his family. Through the sea, you led your people Israel from slavery into freedom. At the river, your son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By water and your word, you claim us as sons and daughters making us heirs of your promise and servants of all. We praise you for the gift of water that sustains life, and above all, we praise you for the gift of new life in Jesus Christ. Shower us with your spirit and renew our lives with your forgiveness, grace, and love. To you, we give an honor and praise for Jesus Christ, our Lord, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Mighty merciful God, you built your church on the foundation of the apostles and prophets. And you instituted the office of the ministry of word and sacrament, so that the apostolic and prophetic work might continue through the ages. At the time now be ordained, may carry out this ministry faithfully in the power of your spirit, through your Son Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. And our reading for today comes from 2 Corinthians, the fourth chapter. We are afflicted in every way, but not crushed. Perplexed, but not driven to despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Struck down, but not destroyed. Always carrying in the body the death of Jesus, so that the life of Jesus may also be made visible in our bodies. For while we live, we are always being given up to death for Jesus' sake, so that the life of Jesus may be made visible in our mortal flesh. So death is at work in us, but life in you. But just as we have the same spirit of faith that is in accordance with scripture, I believed and so I spoke, we also believe and so we speak because we know that the one who raised the Lord Jesus will raise us also with Jesus and will bring us with you into his presence. Yes, everything is for your sake, so that grace as it extends to more and more people may increase thanksgiving to the glory of God. So we do not lose heart. Even though our outer nature is wasting away, our inner nature is being renewed day by day. For this slight momentary affliction is preparing us for an eternal weight of glory beyond all measure, because we look not at what can be seen, but at what cannot be seen. For what can be seen is temporary, but what cannot be seen is eternal. The word of the Lord, the word of life. 
Thanks be to God. Psalm 121. I'll lift up my eyes unto the hills from where does my help come? My help comes from the Lord who made the heavens and the earth. He'll not let your foot slip. He who watches over you will not slumber. The only who watches over Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is our keeper. The Lord is our shade by the right hand. The sun shall not smite you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep your life. The Lord will keep you from all evil. And the Lord will keep your coming and your going from this time forward. Amen. Our gospel reading today comes from Matthew chapter 22, 34 through 40. When the Pharisees heard that he had silenced the Sadducees, they gathered together. And one of them, a lawyer, asked him a question to test him. Teacher, which commandment in the law is the greatest? He said to him, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul, and with your mind. This is the greatest and the first commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. This is the word of God. Grace and peace to you from God, our Creator, and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who calls us to follow. Amen. So I think we should give it a try, don't you think? Maybe just a bit of a test drive. Here we go. Pastor Tom Schwollert. Oh, I like that. I like it a lot. It has a nice ring to it. Pastor Tom Schwollert. Anyway, let's everybody say it with me right now. Ready? Here we go. Pastor Tom Schwollert, the Reverend Tom Schwollert, the most Reverend Tom Sch Okay, let's not get carried away here, I guess, but, but it's a wonderful thing, and, and we are here this afternoon to be a part of the work of the Holy Spirit, the ordination of, of Tom Schwollert that will turn him into Pastor Tom, and it is an honor for all of us to be here, Tom, with you and your family today. Thanks for the invitation to be a part um, of this service. Um, you and I have been friends and colleagues for a really long time, and, and we've kind of been on parallel journeys. Neither, neither of our paths have been particularly linear or traditional, have they? So let's just think about what the Holy Spirit is up to here today. Now, the verb to ordain comes from the same Latin root as to order, and it means basically the same thing. Ordination is presumably about putting things in the right order and about getting the hierarchy right to prolong and protect the organization. Now, now some people I know are critical of organized religion. My response when I hear that is usually that I'm not a part of an organized religion. I'm a Lutheran. But in all seriousness, in this age when more and more Christians are stepping away from any form of denominational authority, we in the ELCA can often be recipients of criticism because we believe in the importance of order. We are in this sense absolutely countercultural when we proclaim that the mission and ministry of the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America and its pastors and deacons still matters, and in fact is of vital importance to the work of God in the world. We believe this ancient ritual of ordination is important. Tom, you will have hands laid on you in a few moments in a sign of demarcation, of, of being set aside that has its origins in the scriptures. And you will join the millions of women and men who have followed St. Peter, the one who was, 
who was initially set apart by Jesus himself. And suddenly, mysteriously, after we lay hands on you, physically or virtually, you will have the authority to baptize and marry and bury and, and preside over the Lord's Supper. People wonder what ministry is. Tom, one of my mentors, Peter Geisendorfer Lindgren, phrased it in a way that I just love. He said that ministry is simply using the gifts God put inside you to do the work God set before you, to bless the people God put around you through the spirit God put within you. And you, Tom, you were created uniquely for this. You were wired up in a way that no one ever has or will be wired. But Tom, on a day like this, full of, of ritual and tradition, your call to ordain ministry may seem pretty impressive. It is the dramatic exclamation point on the end of a long process of education and vocational exploration. But tomorrow, tomorrow, the real work begins. Did you know, Tom, that there is a Sunday every single week and, and a church council meeting every month and a, and a budget every year. People that you open your heart to will break it. People you trust will disappoint you. People you grow to love deeply will get sick and you will stand over their beds and pray with them as you watch them die. Now, while there is much joy in this work, being as a pastor is often not easy. Henry Nouwen explains it this way. He writes, the way of the Christian leader is not the way of upward mobility in which the world has invested so much, but rather the way of downward mobility ending on the cross. It is not a leadership of power and control, but a leadership of powerlessness and humility in which the suffering servant of God, Jesus Christ, is made manifest. Yeah, it can be a difficult job. But for those who are called, it is the greatest job in the world. Every week, you get to stand before people that you love and tell them good news. It just doesn't get any better than that. To thrive in ministry is to cling to the promises that God makes. Just as Jesus drew alongside those men on the road to Emmaus and accompanied them on their journey, he draws alongside you now. And as God said to Moses and Jeremiah and Isaiah and to all those who've gone before you, God says to you, do not be afraid. You do not go alone. You have a great cloud of witnesses who will support your ministry. Remember, Tom, that you are ordained today not by some distant denominational bureaucracy, but by this, this local body of Christ. And you have a tremendous bishop, Bishop Eric, who is your pastor, and he will support you and encourage you and challenge you. And you have the people of, of St. Paul Lutheran Church in Denton, Texas. The folks from this church taught you in Sunday school, um, led you in confirmation, discipled you through high school, and prayed you through college. You have your friends and mentors from Youth Encounter who gave you experiences in leadership that shaped you into who you are today. You have the people of the congregations where you have served in the past, Emmanuel in Eden Prairie, Christ the King in New Brighton, Hosanna in Forest Lake, Faith in Flower Mound, Vibrant Faith Ministries, and Joy Lutheran in Rockwall. These good people shaped you, supported you, and cared for you as you tended to the faith of their youth and families. And then they cheered you on as you followed God's call. And there are your teachers and other students from the Luther Seminary Program of the Southwest who nurtured you in your theological growth. And you have your parents, Norman and Ruth, who on July 28, 1963, brought you to the baptismal font at Gethsemane Lutheran Church in Riverside, California, and made their baptismal vows as a part of this new covenant with God and tended to them faithfully. And your mother is going to present your ordination stole today. 
How special is that? She is still today fulfilling her baptismal vows. And you have your brothers and your sister who have been alongside you for all these years. And you have Melanie, your friend and your wife and your partner in ministry. Tom, you are so deeply blessed. You married way, way upstream. And you have your daughters, Jazzy and Zoe, who love you so much and who are so proud of you today. And I couldn't help but notice on Facebook just yesterday, there is another, a player to be named later. Congratulations to all of you. Congratulations, Grandpa Tom. And there is your son, Max, who today experiences the promises of God fulfilled and who's in that great cloud of witnesses cheering you on today. I believe that you are being ordained today, Tom, is a part of Max's legacy. He taught you what it is to receive and to give love. It's the kind of love that Jesus talked about in our gospel today. It's loving God with all your heart and all your soul and all your mind. It's loving your neighbor with all of your heart and all of your soul and all of your mind. It is love to the max. People of Garland, or Gloria Day Lutheran Church in Garland, Texas, now you have a responsibility to take care of our friend. Your pastor gets up in front of you and opens his soul. Every Sunday can be a tremendous act of bravery. The pastor's mandate is to shepherd the flock. Your mandate, people of Gloria Day, is to protect and love your pastor. I know you will do that well. So, Tom, you have a lot of support as you take this next step in your journey. Now, I don't believe we're doing anything here today that God didn't already do years ago. God said to Jeremiah, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you, and before you were born, I consecrated you. And so it was for you, Tom. You have received your call from the one who knew you before you were ever born. In fact, you were first ordained in the waters of your baptism. And so, in some ways, we are here today just catching up with God's work in Tom's life. And the church is catching up just enough to proclaim that Tom Walter Schwollert is indeed a minister of word and sacrament, authorized, qualified, and called of God to preach the gospel of his son, Jesus Christ. It is to this standard that as pastors we are called and set apart. And I firmly believe that no one will proclaim this gospel with more passion and joy than Pastor Tom Schwollert. Everybody say it with me one more time. Pastor Tom Schwollert. Thanks be to God. Amen. Lord, it's you who has brought me to this day, who has carried and kept me in your care. I look back and I see you in all my years. And so forward I go, knowing you are there. May each word from my lips be a song of good news. Every touch of my hand be a gift of grace. Every beat of my heart be a prayer to you. And the sum of my days be a life of praise.
on my way Christ beside me so I am not alone Christ within me to give me words to say Christ behind me to bring the harvest home. May each word from my lips be a song of good. Every touch of my hand be a gift of grace. Every beat of my heart be a prayer to you. And the sum of my days be a life of grace. The word of 2020, you're on mute. So I don't think we're on mute. Oh, I'm going to put it on your view. Well, you know, let's do that. There we go. Don't mind us, the technical stuff. Let's stand as we confess our faith together, the faith of which we baptize the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and the Lord of the Virgin Mary. He suffered the conscious pilot, which was crucified and died and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, Forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, the life of the last thing. Amen. You all may be seated, Tom. You come and stand here. Nick, if you would come over here to help me. And, uh, no, you can put that down. As long as you can remember a couple words, it'll be good. <laughs> all right. Pastor Totsky, if you would please present him. It is my honor and my joy to present for ordination to the Ministry of Word and Sacrament, Thomas Walter Schwollert, who has been prepared, examined, and approved for this ministry, and who has been called by the church to this ministry through the Northern Texas, Northern Louisiana Synod of the ELCA. Thanks. See you all baptized Christians are called to share in Christ's ministry of love and service in the world, to the glory of God and for the sake of the human family and the whole creation. According to apostolic usage, you, Tom, are now to be entrusted with the office of word and sacrament and the one holy Catholic Church by the laying on of hands and of prayers. Hear these words from Scripture. Jesus said, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. A reading from Matthew, Jesus said, All authority in heaven and earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. And a reading from 1 Corinthians. I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you. That the Lord Jesus on the night when he was betrayed took a loaf of bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it, and he said to them, This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup also after supper, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people. Do this, do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. 
For as often as you eat of this bread and drink of this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Psalm before Almighty God, to whom you must give account, and in the presence of this assembly, I ask, will you assume this office, believing that the church's call is God's call to the ministry of word and sacrament? I will and I ask God to help you. The church in which you are to be ordained confesses that the Holy Scriptures are the word of God and are the norm of its faith and life. We accept, teach, and confess the apostles, the Nicene, and the Athanasian priests. We also acknowledge that the Lutheran confessions are true witnesses and faithful expositions of the Holy Scriptures. Will you therefore preach and teach in accordance with the Holy Scriptures and these creeds and confessions? I will, and I ask God to help me. Will you be diligent in your study of the Holy Scriptures and faithful in your use of the means of grace? Will you pray for God's people? Nourish them with the word and sacraments, and lead them by your own example in faithful service and holy living. I will and I ask God to help you. Will you give faithful witness to the world, so that God's love may be known in all that you do? I will and I ask God to help me. Almighty God, who has given you the will to do these things, graciously give you the strength and compassion to perform them, and we say, Amen. Amen. With the whole people of God in Christ Jesus, let us pray for the church, those in need, and all of God's creation. For the Holy Catholic Church, that filled with your love, it may hunger for truth and thirst after righteousness. God of mercy, hear our For all members of the church, that they may serve you in true and godly lives. God of mercy, hear our For Tom, talk to be a pastor in the church. And sustained by your Holy Spirit, you may carry out the ministry with joy and a spirit of bold trust. Serve your people, build up your church, and glorify your name. God of mercy. For all pastors and deacons, that together with all those responsible for the care and nurture of your people, they may support one another in serving Christ. God of mercy. For the peace of the church, that our divisions may be overcome that united in Christ we may serve the world and bear witness to the good news. God of mercy. For the nations of the world and their leaders, that they may work for justice and promote the dignity and freedom of every person. God of mercy. For the whole creation, that everything you have made may fulfill your purpose, that we may exercise care for your diverse gifts. God of mercy. For the poor, the persecuted, the sick, the lonely, the forgotten and all who suffer, the refugees, prisoners, and all who are in danger, that they may be relieved and protected. God of mercy. Yeah. For the glorious company of all the saints, those who have died in faith and those who live in certain hope, we pray for you, that their witness may give us courage until the day of Jesus Christ. God of mercy. Yeah. Since your hand, gracious God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting your mercy for Jesus Christ our Savior. Amen. Amen. He is my heart, Lord. He is my heart, Lord. Can't breathe. 
you for your infinite love in Christ our Lord, in whom we have redemption and forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace. We thank you that by his death your son overcame death, and that raised by your mighty power he gives us new life. We praise you that, having ascended into heaven, Christ pours out his gifts abundantly on the church, making some apostles, some prophets, some pastors and teachers to equip your people for the work of ministry, for the building up of the body of Christ. Oh, do this without. Yeah. Eternal God, through your Son Jesus Christ, pour out your Holy Spirit upon Tom and fill him with the gifts of grace and the ministry of word and sacrament. Bless his proclamation of your word and administration of your sacraments. So that your church may be gathered for praise and strengthened for service. Make him a faithful pastor, patient teacher, and wise counselor. Grant that in all things he may serve without reproach, that your people may be renewed, and your name be glorified in the church. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. And the church says, Amen. Amen. Ruth? Ruth, if you would come and present the soul, Tom's mother Ruth, is going to come and give this to me. Thank you, Ruth. Don't go too far, because we've got another one I want you to give me. This is the 50th anniversary of the ordination of women in our church, and so we had a, we had a group of our leaders have souls made for them. They're gifting one to Tom that have women of the Bible's names on there, and we saw that Ruth was on there. <laughs> We thought it would be appropriate that you give that to us as well, present it to us as well as a gift to Tom on his ordination day. Thank you so much for bringing him to be baptized. 1963, the call was placed on his life. So thank you for that witness and ministry. This is your dad. Mm -hmm. 
We're getting all the feels now, actually. <laughs> um, receive this skull as a sign of your work, and live in obedience to the Lord Jesus. Serving his people and remembering his promise, come to me, all you that are weary and carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. For I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your soul. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Tom, hear the words of the apostles. Pursue righteousness, godliness, faith, love, endurance, gentleness. Fight the good fight of the faith. Take hold of the eternal life to which you were called. And again, take heed to yourselves and to all the flock in which the Holy Spirit has made you guardians to feed the church of God that he obtained with the blood of his own son. And again, tend the flock of God that is in your charge, not under compulsion, but willingly, not for sordid gain, but eagerly. Do not lord it over those in your charge, but be examples to the flock. And when the chief shepherd appears, you will win the crown of glory that never fades away. And again, think of us in this way, as servants of Christ and as stewards of God's mysteries. Moreover, it is required of the stores that they be found trustworthy. Um, care for God's people, bear their burdens, do not betray their confidence. So discipline yourselves in life and teaching that you preserve the truth, giving no occasion for false security or illusory hope. Witness faithfully and word and deed to all people. Give and receive comfort as you serve within the church. And be of good courage, for God has called you, and your labor in the Lord is not in vain. Now I invite you to bow your hearts unto God and receive a blessing. The God of peace, who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, the great shepherd of the sheep by the blood of the eternal covenant, make you complete in everything good, so that you may do God's will working in you that which is pleasing in God's sight, through Jesus Christ, to whom be the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let's have you stand up. Right. This is where the assembly gets involved a little bit. So you all who are with us live, you're over there, right? You're not here. you got to remember that. <laughs> you all who are with us live, and you all who are with us online, if you would join us together, will you? Assembled as the people of God and speaking for the whole church, receive Tom as a messenger of Jesus Christ, sent by God to serve all people with the gospel of hope and salvation. Will you regard him as a servant of Christ? If so, we will, and we ask God to help us. And we ask God to help us. Will you pray for him, help and honor him for his work's sake, and in all things strive to live it together in the peace and unity of Christ. We will we we ask God yes, to help us. And let it be a point that Thomas Walter Schollard is called, is a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ. He has Christ's authority to preach the word of God and to administer the sacraments, serving God's people as together. We bear God's creative and redeeming love to all the world and we say, Amen. 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 Thanks, Thanks be, to God. be to God. The peace of Christ be with you all. And also, also, with, you. And also with you. This time we're going to have offerings. Uh, there is a link in your notes. And the offerings are invited for the NTNL Fund for Leaders Scholarship, uh, which is a wonderful way that we are able to support 
pastors and others, particularly those who are not traditional students uh, throughout their time in ministry. But is that is that relevant here? <laughs> so, but now we're going to move to the installation of Thomas Pastor at Gloria Day Lutheran Church in Garland, Texas. Having been authorized by the church to install Thomas Walter Schwoller, our co-worker in the gospel, as pastor, I now ask for certification of that call. Steve? After prayerful consideration, we, the people of Gloria Day Lutheran Church, have called Thomas Walter Schwoller as our pastor. I present him and this letter certifying our call. The letter is actually here. <laughs> <laughs> to the wonder of the internet. But we do have a letter of call. This is important because in our church, it is important that you are serving under call to the congregation, the community of God's people. So this is an important part of our life together. Tom, in the presence of this assembly, will you commit yourself to this new trust and responsibility? If so, I will, and I ask God to help me. I will, and I ask God to help me. Will you carry out your duties in harmony with the constitutions of the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America? I will, and I ask God to help me. Tom, the office of pastor is now committed to you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, and we say, Amen. Amen. I can turn and face this massive audience. <laughs> I think, friends, it is an appropriate time for a thanks to God and some applause. Thank you, everyone, for being here. If I can just say a quick thank you. It's been uh, a long journey, and I won't talk long because if I do, I'll probably cry. But um, this last song, as we go out, is really kind of a song of celebration um, from the 2012 Youth Gathering. I know all these Lutherans will probably remember this song. Uh, and by Rachel Curtis, she wanted to actually do it live, but she wasn't, she was touring right now. So, um, but uh, this song is special for our family because we all got to attend the 2012 uh, National Gathering together as a family. So that was a really neat um, experience. And so this this uh, song, it's, it's just all about making a difference. And that's all this is really all about, really. And that's what God calls us to be. So. Let's just celebrate with this song and, um, and and thank God for all the great gifts that he's given us. Thank you, and you are all a gift to me. Thank you. Thank you, Tom. And again, thank you to all who joined us virtually. Uh, we are very blessed to have a cloud of witnesses around us and with us. Particularly, I want to lift up seminary leaders. Thank you, uh, Dr. Alanis, for being with us. Uh, Moses, thank you for being with us and being a part of that program and that life that we have. And then also to the staff of NPNL who are part of this, and also all of you who have joined. Pastor Bugler, thank you for your word and your sermon. And uh, we do celebrate Pastor Tom Schultz. What a gift it is <laughs> to see. Oh, all right. <laughs> you may be seated, and let's hear from Rachel. <laughs> You gave your life to make a difference. You gave your life to make a change. You welcomed all.
hostility is history. One body bringing unity, new humanity. Family's reality, we used to be distant. Now we're all together and we're making a difference. Walk alongside ya, I don't wanna fight ya. Christ is our peace, our prophet like Elijah. Singer than our savior, we're no longer strangers. Used to be far away, today we now are neighbors. Walls fall like, oh! Cornerstones, Christ, our peace and the giver of life. Hold us together in God is tonight. Show us how you want us to serve, how you want us to listen. With you, we'll be making a difference. Come on. Make a difference.